Hi, and welcome to another episode of Field Engineering. I'm JD Brake with our very special guest, Phil Kimball, the ever knowledgeable fountain of knowledge. Hi, JD. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Well, hey, Phil, I brought you on today for a very special topic. Probably one of the most common things that I hear from our contractors is a failed damper in the field. want to know how do you diagnose that a damper motor is bad and what do we do to take care of that because a lot of times these things are in places where it's not easy to get to that's true uh jd and of course we always recommend that any type of zone damper that you install Mm -hmm. needs to be accessible yeah uh, don't stick it up in a ceiling and sheetrock over it and you can't get to it because the day may come <laughs> where, uh, for whatever reason, the there might be a mechanical failure or an electrical failure on the damper itself and you can't get to it. So uh, that's rule number one. Mm-hmm. If you put in zone dampers, make sure you can access them. Um, a lot of times we'll get calls from techs out there in the field and you say uh the damper is not working that doesn't mean that the damper (laughs) has failed there's a couple reasons uh for this okay first of all we're going to talk today about a very very popular type of zone damper this is a two wire these are all two wires yeah they're all two wire we have rectangles around but this happens to be these are two wire actuators what i mean by that is it powers the damper blade in the closed position, and when you take power off of it, Boing. the blade spring returns mm-hmm. open. Right. Um, first thing you want to make sure of is when you're wiring a zone damper, a two-wire damper, to a zone control panel, that it's wired properly. Mm. Most <laughs> panels on the market today have both power open and power closed terminals. Mm-hmm. So... You want to make sure that this, these dampers, power open or power closed spring return open dampers, are wired to the common and the power closed side right. of the terminals. Right. And sure enough, a lot of times techs say, "Well, the damper is working backwards," and it's really not. It's just because it was wired backwards. <laughs> uh, two wire dampers. You know, that's all we got. Two wires, uh, and we don't care which one's a common or which one is. Uh, uh, the power okay, close no side. polarity. I mean, yep. it's just... And uh, 24 volts. So as long as you know that the damper, uh, when uh, the zone isn't calling, and that zone damper is in the closed position, uh, the damper blade should begin to close. In other words, I'll show you that, damper blade closed, and uh, I've cheated this a little bit yeah. so I can do it manually, and damper open. Now, open position... The spring does that. And what's kind of interesting, over the years, uh, damper technology has improved, especially motors. It used to be that uh, you would have a motor with a spring on it. Uh Uh-huh. Way long time ago, before you were even born, (laughs) J.D. They used to put a spring on the blade. Oh, wow. Now, this is an impedance-protected motor. In other words, you can stall it. And you're not going to burn the motor out. But it would drive against the spring tension. Then when you take power off the motor, that spring would start to pull the blade uh, basically in the open position. And the speed in which it did that was not linear. In other words, it would start out slow. And by the time it got to the end, (laughs) bam, it would just... (laughs) Bust the heck out of everything. Yeah. And eventually, gears would fail hmm. because uh, they would come to a dead stop and there was nothing to absorb that, that motion. Well, dampers improve. Now we have a spring return actuator that when it gets to the end of the travel, in other words, the blade mechanically stops itself, there is a spring that actually takes up that backlash and it absorbs the inertia so thus 
the gearing doesn't come to a slam halt right. and start breaking or centering. Now, that's really cool, and we've used these for years. The next thing that came along was an air brake. <laughs> See that little thing there? That was my nickname in basketball. Yeah, air yeah, brake. Is brake. that your name? Yeah. Anyway, what an air brake does is, because it's encapsulated in this enclosure here, as the string starts to pull the damper blade open, mm -hmm. the air brake keeps it slowed down. Okay. So now it's a fairly gradual return, and when it comes to the end of the stop, there's very, very uh, a little uh, impact on the gearing. So spring return dampers have really improved. Do they fail? Yep, they can yep. fail. Uh, you have to remember a zone control damper cycles thousands and thousands right. of times over its life expectancy. So they can fail. Now the best way to check on that is whether it's a round or a rectangular damper, you got they all have these little covers on them. Some are easy to remove, others <laughs> aren't. You notice there's an enclosure, the air brake is actually inside here, but you can actually visually inspect the gearing. Yeah, now see I found uh, in the junk pile an <laughs> actuator that actually had failed. And I don't know if uh, we can get the camera on that, but you see where this is a metal gear and that we also have a nylon gear. Reason for that, two metal gears together can make a little noise. Mm -hmm. Not always, but they can. If you take a metal gear and a nylon gear, it's very quiet, smooth. Right. But over a period of time, we can break off some teeth. Yeah. Now, the best way you find out, well, the damper isn't working is if the zone is not calling and you still got air coming out of that ductwork, chances are it has failed. Now, the motor didn't fail. The gearing failed. Mm -hmm. Impedance-protected motors basically never fail. Right. Well, unless you wire a 24-volt motor to 120 volts, then <laughs> it will fail very quickly. Yes. Everything will melt and blow up and burn. <laughs> I love seeing that, but anyway, <laughs> that would be the easiest way to inspect this. In other words, take the cover off, take a look at the gearing, are all the all the gears, you know, in right. line together, or you're missing some teeth, <laughs> and uh, that's probably why it will fail on you. Now we got to replace it. Oh darn! Well, these are laying here on a table. That makes life easy. Yep. But this damper's in a duct. Mm -hmm. Okay. This damper is in a pipe, and I don't want to take that thing out of there just no. to replace a, a motor. Well, I don't have to. Um, all the replacement actuators, let me this off here, come with rounds, have a little collar on them. See that little collar? And the reason for that is that collar, as we put the new replacement on there, this collar is designed to allow you to adhere to the damper, uh, the actuator shaft, right. and also the damper shaft. So if we were going to replace a round damper, put over here. Here's a new one. This is a brand new one. Okay. Yep. These are shipped from the factory with this collar on it. Okay. So a piece of cake. This is called an anti-rotation pin. Why would we want to have this thing sticking out there? Well, the reason is, if it wasn't there, and you hooked that on there, this actuator just <laughs> simply going to do this, and it'll wind <laughs> up all your wire and pull all the wiring out of the wall and everything mm -hmm. else. So this is an anti-rotation pin. You on a round damper, you leave the collar on, simply stick that into the anti-rotation pin hole, and you take your handy dandy little driver here, and oh, it's in the duct. How do I know if it's open or closed? Mm, good question. See that long screw here? That's called a minimum position adjustment screw. Mm. That means that I can actually create a minimum amount of airflow when the damper's in the closed position. Right. So by looking at this little diagram or chart on here, I can take that, 
I don't have to loosen it. And I can push that up to basically zero. <laughs> in other words, wide open. Mm -hmm. And I know that inside here, that damper blade's in the open position. Sure is. And with the damper blade in the open position, then I just simply go ahead and lock the collar onto the shaft, and we're good to go. Now, trick, or a, a, a trick, but also caution. Once you tighten this down, don't use physical force on the minimum position adjustment screw to push this thing uh, to see if it's going to work. Power it. Power it, power it open, or power it close, spring return it open. But don't physically try to force this because you will ruin the gearing in it. That's, right. That's happened a lot. Guys say, well, here, I'll just see if it'll work, and they actually destroy it. Now, on a rectangular damper, you get to keep this really neat souvenir. <laughs> Because the collar is already built in. This has a shaft uh, extent, extension on it. So the co this is the actual collar. So I just take that, line it up, bing, done, tighten it down, and I just replace the actuator. Awesome. And it takes about that long. It's that quick. Very that's a simple. lot quicker than ripping the entire thing out of the duct yeah, or the so pipe. I'll take that out of the duct. Because no. that's a common thing that happens is we get dampers returned. There's nothing wrong with the actual shell that's right. of the damper. It's just the motor. Now, another thing that can cause a problem with the damper doesn't have anything to do with this motor. Um, guy shoots a zip screw in the wrong place. <laughs> now he's got a screw that's grabbing the blade. Yeah. Well, one, when you have the actuator off, you definitely want to make sure... That the damper blade is free, that mm -hmm. it moves freely, it just floats freely. If all of a sudden you go clunk, uh oh, <laughs> now I have a mechanical problem. In other words, there's a zip screw stuck in there, or it got warped or right. bent, and it's causing a mechanical issue. But if it floats freely like that, we're good to go. So I'm going to install that, put that in a wide open position. This is a zone damper. Remember that. Put the damper on, or the actuator on, screw it down, done. Hmm. Put 24 volts to it, 24 volts, it will power itself close, and when it powers itself close, I've got, the, I don't have this tighten, you can actually watch the minimum position screw. Right. Goes to all the way to its travel, take power off, and it respring returns open. Now, the difference between a zone damper and an outside makeup air damper is the direction of travel. Power open. Yeah. Outdoor, uh, bringing in outside air, right. such as uh, ventilation, our ventilation control systems. Yep. We use the same type of dampers, mostly rounds, but you could use rectangulars, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. <laughs> but the thing is, is that you would want that damper to fail in the closed position if you lost power. Right. In a zone control system, we want the damper to fail in the open position if we lose power mm -hmm. or if the panel gets hit by lightning or whatever happens. Right. That way we're not having to run around manually open dampers up. <laughs> so the only difference is, is that if you were going to replace the actuator on a makeup air damper, you simply make sure that the damper is in the closed position <laughs> and you stick the actuator <laughs> on. Because they come from the factory already set up like that. Real right. simple. Screw it down. Now it will power the damper open and spring return it closed. Any questions, J.D.? No, I mean, that's pretty much explained a large majority of tech calls that we get. I mean, it's you made it seem as simple as possible to kind of change those out. And for the guy out there in the field, it's easy to just replace the actuator if you have proved that, proven that it's failed rather mm -hmm. than pull the whole damper out. Right. Uh, takes time. Absolutely. Costs money. Absolutely. This is a very inexpensive way to do it. Yes. And these are robust. They, they last many, many years. <laughs> I mean, literally. Uh, I have seen actuators that have actually been in zoning uh, applications for almost 25 years. Ooh. Yowzers. And yet, 
there are days when things don't go right. <laughs> exactly. So just remember, uh, if you need to replace a uh, spring return actuator, uh, you contact us. We know how to do it. You know how to do it now. And we even have a little instruction sheet that nobody reads, but we, we do provide that. <laughs> Just toss it or as soon as they open the box. But and that's okay. we also apply the same basic uh, methods to three-wire actuators, power open, power close. Um, there are all types of actuators on the market. Mm -hmm. But, man, hundreds of thousands of these out there. Right. And uh, they, they've been a real key to our industry for a long time. We're kind of gradually getting away from them with our new ESP technology and things mm -hmm. like that, where we're actually using power open, power closed actuators more and more. But you'll run into them, and when you find them, hey, it may have a black cover, it may have a blue cover, it may have a silver cover on it. <laughs> uh, we got this great app, you know, where we can actually talk to the tech and. Ah, uh, the virtual the, tech the app you're talking about. Virtual tech app. <laughs> and the guy can. Say, well, it looks like this. And we know immediately. <laughs> oh, yes. That's an old, old one, and we can replace it with a new, new one. So awesome. There you go. Absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned that, Phil. That app is for free uh, in all uh, app stores, whether it's Android or uh, iPhone. And uh, you can always call us directly and talk to someone like Phil to have questions or go over an installation just like this at 888-652-9663. Uh, Phil, thanks for coming on. This was incredibly You're helpful. Welcome. I appreciate it, as always. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Field Engineering. We hope to see you next time. Take care. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to smack that like button below. And if you want notifications on brand new videos that are coming out tailored just for you, be sure to subscribe right here to the Jackson Systems YouTube channel. Now, if there's some videos you missed, you can always check it out right here. Go ahead and click. Subscribe, other videos, like, do it.